Let me begin by saying that the question as we, we put it out has become a perennial question about Islam and democracy. <clears throat> Unfortunately, too often it ignores a number of things. What is actually happening intellectually among many Muslims um, in terms of thinking about democracy, and then the reality on the ground, the fact that we now have polls that tell us what many people in the Muslim world think or do not think about democracy and its relationship to Islam, and then also the realities of Muslim politics, what have been happening, what's been happening in recent years. Our very title reflects only one possibility when we say what, because the question becomes what do we mean by liberal democracy? Well, I think most of us have an idea of what that means, but what it most probably means is that it refers primarily to the American experience of separation of church and state. And even that experience and the way in which we came about it in America was based on but one early American Protestant interpretation and set of social values which became government policy. I want to thank John Vole for that idea. In fact, much of this is John Vole's. No. Um, or is it the liberal democracy to be found in many countries in Europe, in places like Britain and Sweden and Norway and others, where you have a structural relationship between church and state, where you have a state religion, uh, where the ruler must belong to that religion and or the state provides funding uh, for schools or pays the salaries of religious folk. If so, can a modern government in today's world of multiple modernities choose to establish a democratic government with an Islamically inspired moral and ethical basis for its law and government? Now let's look at democracy itself on the ground. And here I refer to poll data but particularly the Gallup World Poll, which is the most systematic and comprehensive uh, survey um, of the Muslim world, some 35 countries. We now have more than that. Uh, I'm associated with Gallup. Um, and it represents the voices of one billion Muslims. In fact, when you ask Muslims about those qualities that we associate with democracy, self-determination, the rule of law, free speech, free press, we see that majorities of Muslims want these freedoms want a more open and accountable political system, but many do not believe that they have to choose between Islam and democracy. And so for many, they do not want a Western secular democracy, but want to see uh, a form of government that is in fact informed by uh, religious values and principles. Now that often is expressed in terms of wanting to see Sharia, but here Sharia in many different meanings as a kind of moral compass of values and principles, <coughs> excuse me, as a source of law, not the source of law. Now this shouldn't surprise many Americans in a comparative perspective when you realize that polls show that 48% of Americans believe that our laws should be based on the Bible, which is an interesting statistic that many Americans aren't aware of. But in terms of what is meant by something like Sharia, and here also becomes the problem, there are diverse meanings. For some, it would be constitutional lip service. For others, it would be a system where no law is contrary to what would be seen as Islamic values. Or where a country's laws are a blend of those derived from Western legal codes and selected Islamic laws. But clearly, significant majorities are not talking about any form of theocracy. Well, how does tradition matter? And here, uh, I'll be brief. Uh, in a new book that I have called The Future of Islam, I like very modest titles for my books, uh, which will be out in January, I have a subtitle, it's Tradition, Anchor, or Albatross. In many ways, tradition in Islam, as in Judaism, as in Christianity, is an anchor. In many of these traditions, you talk about, as it were, the divinely revealed sources, and then you have tradition, and that tradition is a composite of many things, development of doctrine, development of law, etc. But one of the issues that ari arises is the extent to which, for many, over time, as they look back, tradition becomes sacralized. And so when you look at debates within the Muslim world among those who seek reform between neo-traditionalists or, if you will, traditionalists, for example, and, and what one might call Islamic modernists, and these phrases are always problematic, one of the issues that arises is to what extent is tradition sacred? To be very specific, Take the issue of, and this is a controversial issue right now, women leading mixed prayer. For many traditionalists, Timothy Winter at Cambridge and others, they would argue that there is nothing in the Quran that prohibits it, nothing in a major hadith that prohibits it, but that in fact the tradition has always not 
permitted it. And that therefore Muslims should not choose to go back to the sources to uh, revise and come up with a new position. So here's where you have a difference, and that is other reformers will say that tradition should be a reference point, but that the, the fact that tradition is a product of both sacred sources and human interpretation and understanding conditioned by social context also has, has to come into play. And I think that that becomes a, a very important division as we look uh, towards the future and will affect issues like the role of uh, minorities, so that one will have to say that the traditional role of minorities within Muslim societies, which in its time was relatively liberal, the notion of protected people who could practice their faith in exchange for paying a, t paying a tax, et cetera, that in a modern society with equality of citizenship, et cetera, that needs to be revisited and issues such as apostasy and others. Thank you. <laughs>